Hi everybody, today I want to cover some tips and tricks in Canvas. And some of these are a little bit hidden, and so I'm going to reveal them to you. And others are hidden in plain sight, and you might have just not seen them before, but I want to point them out to you. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to put audio on your Canvas page. And it could be a wiki page, it could be an assignment, a discussion post, whatever, as long as you have the rich content editor. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. They're both pretty simple. One is very easy and one's a little bit less easy, but I think it looks a lot nicer. So I'm going to show you both approaches. So in the first box, this is just media that's uploaded in the rich content editor in the media upload feature. And the second one uses a little bit of HTML in order to render the interaction. And I like the second approach a little bit better. So let's start from scratch and I'm on the editing page and I want to put my audio right here where the placeholder is. So the first thing I'll do is go into the rich content editor. I'm going to click on the media upload button. And this way I can just drag and drop or I can search for the file on my computer. Click submit and it's done. Now when I save that, then I have the media. It's in its own player. It's in this big box and I can click play. Happy morning. morning. And it's there for my students. They can adjust the volume. They can adjust the playback speed. It's pretty simple. And that's the easiest way to get audio into a player, like a podcast or any audio that you record for your students. But I want to show you a better way, and I have some code down here, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that code. We're going to edit this page again, and I'm going to use that code. So hopping in the HTML editor, I put the code right where I want it, and now all I need is the URL for the audio. And let me hop over to the files section, because I put some audio in my course files. And they're in a folder called audio, and so any one of these audios I could upload as a podcast onto that page. I'm going to click one, I'm going to copy the link address to that file. Then hopping over here, I can just paste that where it says URL, and then I'll click Save. And you can compare and contrast the two different audio files. This first one, it's a little bit simpler to upload because you just click the button and drag it over and it's done. This other one, you have to drag it into your files and copy the URL, and then you put it into this code. But look at how clean that player is. Happy morning. The audio is the same. It's not like one is, sounds better than the other, but I just like the interface, how minimal it is. And also students have the option to download the audio if they wanted to keep it offline or they can adjust the playback speed. So again, it's just a matter of uploading the audio into Canvas using a little bit of HTML and I'll have the link to my blog post at howtocanvas.com in the description below. So you can go ahead and grab that code and use it on your Canvas page. Now this isn't exactly a canvas hack. This is more of a let's use some HTML and dress up the content hack, but the HTML is there and it renders nicely in canvas. And I want to show you another thing that you can do that's more of a computer hack than a canvas hack, but it looks really interesting in canvas. And that is how you can easily put some emojis on your canvas page, including in the header right over here. So I'm on a computer. I'm going to put a space over here and I'm going to hold the windows button and the period. And that pulls up on my Windows machine an emoji menu. And I'm going to search for music, and I'm going to grab a couple of music notes. And then I'll put that in the end as well. Now I said Windows period, but Windows semicolon actually brings up the same menu. So you can either hold the Windows button and the period or the semicolon. And then you just start typing out your emoji, whichever one you want. And there you go. When I save that, it's going to save it in the header. You can see in the breadcrumbs, it's saved there. You can see at the top of the page, now I got emojis on the top of the page, and I can put that in the content of the page as well. And let's go to the modules and see what that looks like then on the modules page. There you can see the audio play, it really stands out from the other pages that I have here in my sandbox. On Windows, you can do the exact same thing, but you would press Control, Command, and Spacebar, and then you'd pull up the Mac emoji menu. Now I want to show you something fun. We're here on my dashboard, but did you know that there's a hidden game in Canvas? If I were to go to the URL and just mess it up, I'm going to put two S's for the word modules, hit enter. That's not a valid page, so I'm going to get this, oops, looks like nothing's here page, the 404 page. If I press spacebar while I'm on that page, I get to play a little game. It looks like I'm not doing so great. Maybe if I just run through, yep, you can see what kind of score you get. I'm going to try it again, and there's another game too where you have to fight the coronavirus with the vaccines. And so you have a little space shuttle, and you get to, and you just hold the space bar down, and it fires off these syringes. Or if you press space bar really fast, then it'll fire them off really fast. If you grab the paper towels or the toilet paper, then you get to um, increase the ammo. And so I can shoot three syringes at a time, see what kind of score you get. The score is at the very top of the page. 
you don't want the coronaviruses to touch you or else game over, and you don't want the viruses to reach the very bottom before you have a chance to shoot them with the syringe or else it's also game over. Let me know in the comments below what your final score is. What's the top score that you've gotten on one of these games? For this next tip, I'm gonna back up to the audio page that we created. And let's suppose I really like this page and I want to send it to a colleague, or I use this page in this course and I want to share it with another course that I'm teaching, or from one semester to another semester. What's the best way to copy all of this content that I have here? Now the content might be pictures, you might have some videos, obviously there's gonna be text, and formatting all along the way. How can I give all of that to my colleague or how can I copy it to another Canvas course? So an easy way to do that is if you click the kebab icon, you can send it to somebody or you can copy it to a course. When I click send to, then I can start typing the name of the person I want to send it to. And then you can click on that person and then you can send it off to them. Now let's take a quick look at what that looks like when you've received content. If I click on my account, then there's a shared content item right here. And if I click on that, then I can see everything that people have shared with me. And for the actions, I can preview the content. I can import it into a course. So I just start typing the course. And you can even determine, do you want to copy it into a specific module? And do you want it at a certain place in the module, such as after a page or before a page? And then you click import, and it'll put the content right onto that page wherever you put it, or right within the course. Now another thing I can do, if I'm on this page and I want to copy this, this asset to another course, I can copy it to the course. And so I'd again choose the course that I want to copy that to, and then you just press copy. So that's a real quick and easy way that you can share content either with yourself across semesters or across courses, or that you can share it with a colleague. Something else that I want to point you to is that if I'm on this page, this looks good to me, but I'm an administrator, I'm in a teacher function, and it might look different to students. And so another tip I want to point you to, which is hidden in plain sight for some people, but if you haven't seen the student view, then you can go ahead and click on that and it's going to help you to masquerade as what a student would see. And students see things different in Canvas than teachers do. For example, they see exactly what you want them to see in the course navigation, whereas you're gonna have a lot more options. You might have content that's hidden, you might have to-do lists, and it depends on what part of the course you're in. So a student might see the home page in this format, and it has things that I have to do, upcoming assignments that I need to complete, whereas if I leave the student view, then the teacher is going to have a completely different outlook. They're gonna have assignments that they have to grade and a lot more options on the navigation, as well as the course navigation, where there's links that are hidden from the students that I can see. So as you're working throughout Canvas, make sure to visit that student view from time to time just to make sure that things look the way that you want them to look for the students. And I want to show you one last thing, and this might not apply to a lot of people, but for me, I have various sandboxes at various Canvas instances, and sometimes I want to populate my Canvas course with dummy students. I want to just masquerade as a student, not a real student, but I just want my own dummy student to work with. And so one thing I did, this is a free for teachers Canvas account that I have, and my email to log on to it is this email canvaseducator at gmail.com. But I wanted to create some dummy students, and I don't want to create six different email addresses just so that I can have these dummy students. And so what I did is I kept my Canvas educator email, but then in Canvas when I was loading people, I used Canvas educator plus student. So I have plus student one, I have plus student two, and all of those emails then go back to my Gmail account. It's all the same email from the Gmail end of things, but in Canvas it sees it as six different email addresses and seven with my teacher admin account. And then when I created these student accounts, so I, each time I enrolled one of these students, like Canvas Educator plus student one at gmail.com, it went to my regular email account and then I would log in as this new student and select a password, and I just use the same password for all six, and I have a password management system that's locked away, and so I can just keep that information on a different platform, and that allows me to not create six different email addresses, but just use the same one, and then create six different personas, six different dummy students. And that allows me to do things like explore the gradebook and look at assignments and submit assignments. And then if I'm doing a demo for teachers, then I can show them what the gradebook looks like with dummy student content. So again, if you ever want to create a dummy account, just use whatever Gmail address you're using and add plus and then something after the plus. And then the platform will think it's a different email address, but it all goes back to your Gmail account. And then you don't have to be managing all these different accounts. So anyway, these tips and tricks, I hope that you find them useful. 
they're not so much strictly canvas but they're kind of a little bit of internet mixed with canvas some html some windows and mac os and a little bit of gmail i think that these features and these functions will really help you level up and help you enhance your abilities as a teacher so again go to the website howtocanvas.com and grab that code for the audio file go ahead and copy it from the blog post and paste it into your canvas and have fun uploading some audio and make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button so that way that more of my content will show up on your dashboard in YouTube because you definitely want to catch these videos. You don't want to watch whatever Mr. Beast has because, you know, he's, he doesn't know anything about Canvas. This is where the true engagement happens. You know it, I know it, so just go ahead and hit that like button, go ahead subscribe, and I will see you next week. Happy Digging and Morning!